Good afternoon. Uh, we are going to start. Welcome back uh, after the, the summer break. Uh, it's quite uh, logical to start with the uh, COVID-19 crisis with the uh, ECDC uh, uh, director. And uh, welcome to have you here, uh, Dr. Amon. Um, before moving directly to you, uh, a few things to be uh, Adopted. So first, uh, the adoption of the agenda. I guess no problem. Uh, I don't have any uh, uh, formal announcements beyond the usual ones on interpretation, electronic meeting file, and the fact that some members are remotely participating, which is now obvious. Uh, the next uh, point on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the meetings of the 4th of May, 11th of May, 12th of May. Approved. So we can now directly uh, move to the uh, exchange of views with uh, Dr. Amon. Uh, very happy again to have you here. Um, a lot of questions uh, raised this summer with uh, some chaotic situations uh, uh, at borders within the EU uh, and also some controversial decisions made by uh, some member states, not always based on the uh, ECDC uh, analysis and recommendations. So very um, happy to hear from you what your assessment of where we are, uh, also in terms of European cooperation, coordination, and the rooms for uh, improvement. So, Dr. Amon, the, the floor is yours for 15 minutes, and then there will be a catch-the-eye session. Yeah, thank you very much and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope you had uh, some time to um, uh, switch off uh, wherever you have been. And um, uh, the virus hasn't been sleeping over the summer, so it didn't take vacation. Uh, and that uh, is something that we see now. Um, we um, have seen now uh, in this uh, week that the uh, notification rate in the UEA countries and the UK is now 46 per 100,000. You may remember that at one point um, we have been already uh, below 15. So uh, there is an increase and this increase ha uh, we have been seeing now for more than five weeks. It has been a uh, slower increase as we had in um, in March. Uh, in March, um, however, we are almost back to the numbers uh, that we have uh, seen in uh, March. Um, the, uh, of course, uh, from our point of view, these notification rates uh, they vary. Uh, they vary from two per hundred thousand to 176 per 100,000. That means that the epidemiological situation in the countries is not the same. In addition, uh, this notification rate is depending on a number of other factors. And the most important of these factors is who is being tested and um, how many tests are carried out. And so um, uh, we see also, especially in this, uh, the number of tests that are carry carried out per uh, population, uh, a large uh, variety and variation between the countries, ranging from 173, 173 per 100,000 to more than 6,000 tests per 100,000. And of course, um, that has an influence on uh, the um, uh, notification rate. Uh, what is another parameter that we are looking at right now is how many of these tests that are carried out are positive. Because that is also something that helps to determine whether the increase in notification rate is only due to the increase in uh, testing. Uh, 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 carried out. So, and if this positivity rate remains the same, even though you, um, you, you carry out more tests and have then more cases, that doesn't mean that the uh, transmission situation has changed. 
only if the test positivity rate, meaning the number, the percentage of tests positive uh, that you carry out, that if this increases, then it's also an indication that this increase that you see um, uh, is um, um, due to uh, the uh, increased um, a number of testing and an increased um, uh, and an increased uh, uh, transmission. Um, uh, another parameter that we're looking at is also the hospitalization rate. Uh, because this can also be an indicator that uh, transmission in the country is increasing. However, um, uh, for the um, uh, increases that we have seen in August, um, we have seen very uh, um, uh, relatively small or no increase in hospitalization rates. And that uh, we uh, conclude is due to the fact that uh, now more uh, younger people have been uh, affected. Uh, that was when we did our risk assessment uh, uh, in the first, uh, uh, th uh, first 10 days in, uh, in August. Now we're seeing um, more um, uh, also that older uh, population is affected, indicating that it's really uh, a true uh, increase in transmission. So that has been um, uh, has been uh, uh, part of our our um, uh, work in the moment, and uh, we have uh, looked into um, also uh, the difference in the countries, and it is really uh, not a, a homogeneous picture in the EU. Um, we have been um, uh, working on different other things. Uh, one is uh, we have prepared a guidance on schools. Um, and um, uh, in particular, um, um, uh, the role of schools in um, the uh, transmission. And uh, there, um, it was actually already at the very beginning of uh, the, uh, this outbreak in, in China that uh, it was seen um, very, children are very rarely affected. And that has continued over all these months now, from all the num uh, the cases that we have been uh, that we have reported, uh, less than five percent are actually in um, uh, young people below eighteen. And uh, also, when uh, when diagnosed with uh, COVID, uh, children seem to have milder symptoms, uh, fewer hospitalization, and uh, very rarely uh, deaths. Um, that means that uh, uh, children may have very mild symptoms that go undetected. And um, so we have been looking into the evidence uh, what the, 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 the role of schools um, in, in this transmission could be. And uh, there are very few, very significant outbreaks in schools um, that have been documented. And um, uh, the, the evidence is really, uh, at the moment, conflicting, meaning it's very, um, 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 well, inconclusive to say um, uh, whether uh, it's uh, useful or not from a transmission point of view uh, to close schools. Um, so uh, in March, April, uh, school closures have been part of the big package of uh, non-pharmaceutical interventions. And as such, it is very difficult to assess uh, what the specific contribution of uh, school closures to the whole um, uh, transmission reduction that we have seen has been. Um, we have uh, uh, observations from a few countries that have um, reopened schools very early on as one of the first measures. And these countries have not seen uh, increased transmission um, after they have reopened the schools. So I also have to say they have not reopened the schools as they were before. Uh, but they have um, uh, um, uh, implemented certain measures um, in, the, um, in line with the, the usual um, uh, um, measures that we, that we say, uh, physical distancing, 
um, uh, increased hand washing, uh, symptomatic teachers and uh, children uh, should stay home. Um, uh, no um, uh, mass gatherings uh, or gatherings in the schools. And uh, some uh, uh, schools have then done um, these uh, sequential schooling so that they have split the classes and uh, alternated in staying home, being in school and, and these measures. So um, uh, the, the, the reopening was not going back to the, to the, um, to the old, um, old way. Uh, in, on the other hand, um, there have been observations that uh, the uh, closing of the schools had effects uh, in, on the well-being of the children. And of course, uh, they haven't been uh, uh, progressing in their education. Um, so in, in essence, um, uh, for us, uh, uh, what we're saying, uh, that is, uh, schools are really an essential part uh, of uh, the society and uh, children's lives. I mean, it's very important that children uh, have the possibility uh, to, to uh, be exposed to peers. And uh, that is why we have uh, concluded that closing schools should be really the last measure that you take if you have to take uh, uh, measures. Um, and um, uh, But you have to put um, um, a, measures in place in order to also uh, limit uh, the, the transmission and uh, uh, how they are uh, locally applied will of course depend on the um, uh, local situation how much space there is uh, how many children there are in the classes so um, I mean there we cannot be too prescriptive here um, we have also had um, uh, um, a guidance on outbreaks in occupational settings. There have been, especially in July, uh, a number of uh, big outbreaks in, in occupational settings, in the meat processing factories, in mines. Um, and um, when, when looking into this, it always comes down to the same um, factors. Uh, too close proximity uh, of, of people. So it is the physical distancing again um, uh, and the, the single um, uh, elements how this uh, close proximity manifests itself uh, depends on the occupational setting. It can be shared occup um, accommodations, it can be shared transport, it can be close proximity on, a, on an assembly line, uh, it can be uh, also uh, in, in some cases maybe bad ventilation, uh, but um, in, in essence it is the, the, the lack of possibility to, to uh, keep uh, distance. So um, uh, here it's also very difficult, of course, to give uh, general or no specific um, uh, um, uh, guidance. But um, I think the, the, the um, specific uh, work environment has to then see uh, how um, uh, physical distance can be, can be implemented uh, and provide additional measures if it cannot be implemented, meaning uh, in, in, in terms of uh, face masks uh, uh, and so forth. Usually these outbreaks occurred in settings where uh, teleworking is not an option. Um, and uh, that also has to be taken into account when thinking now um, for, or, or for, for um, uh, uh, future reduction of transmission. Um, we are, of course, now uh, you... Um, uh, <laughs> The chair has mentioned the, the issue with uh, traveling. Um, we have um, uh, been supporting both uh, the, uh, the council and the, the commission in their efforts to look for ways uh, how to this, um, um, uh, what can be done to streamline um, the, the measures that uh, are taken uh, by the countries. And um, there are now uh, discussions still ongoing and um, a series of consultations will follow uh, very, very soon. So that, um, well, we uh, just hope uh, we can, we can uh, get some, some streamlining into, into what's uh, being done. Uh, I stop here because uh, I know that you have a lot of questions. Thank you.
thank you very much.